Hi, hello, welcome to Insect Systematics lecture series. We were discussing the general characters of orders and economically important families. We are getting into the most diversified, most dominant order in this lecture, that is order Coleoptera. So as lecture 13A, under the lecture 13, I'll be dealing with one of its major suborders called Adifega. In fact, it consists of you know, four suborders being a very dominant group now uh, countries of varieties of you know beetles and weevils so this is a one of the biggest artists in fact so it cannot be covered in a single lecture so that's why i have divided this you now harder coleoptera into two lectures so in the first lecture that is under 13a i'll be talking about suborder adifega okay so this is where we are now subdivision oligoneoptera in fact we completed previously on the discussions uh, subdivision palineoptera various artists were covered and as well as Paraneoptera. Okay, so now we are talking about subdivision Oligoneoptera, which consists of insects with complete metamorphosis. So that means insects with four stages, egg, larva, pupa, adult. So larva may be caterpillar, grub, or maggot. Okay, so we are talking about Coleoptera. They are commonly called beetles and beetles. Okay, so why this order? Now, how actually this order came into existence? Okay, etymologically, Coleo means sheath. Okay, so sheath is actually because of the front pairs of you now highly ardent or leathery or brittle elytra. So those are actually the modified forewings which covers the entire abdominal portion and as a result of that, okay, so you now it gives the you know, complete protection to the body. So, okay, so that's how this because of these elytra, this order actually came into existence. So however, para means wings, that means sheath sheathed wings, very ardent wings, wherein the four wings are modified as elytra. Okay, so this order is consists of very minute to large insects. So in millimeter to centimeter, more than 50 centimeter, in fact, of course. So mouth parts are of chewing type. Okay, so biting and modified biting and chewing type of mouth parts. Four wings are modified as rigid elytra, okay, and are not used for flying. Okay, so they are held you know, perpendicular to body like this. Okay, and now they luckily, when they are resting, usually they cover the, the remaining part of the thorax as well as the abdomen, you can see here. So this part, that means the upper part, the targal part of abdomen is actually soft. Okay, so because the elytra itself actually you now gives protection to both the hind wings as well as the remaining parts of thorax and abdomen. Okay, so four wings are modified as rigid elytra and are not used for flying, whereas hind wings are membranous longer than the four wings and are usually folded beneath the elytra. So beneath the four wings and are used for flight. Okay, so abdominal sterna strongly sclerotized than the tergum. Okay, you can see here. So this part is actually softer, whereas the, the ventral part, okay, sternum is actually very hard. Okay, so why is this upper part is actually soft? This is actually because of that function is actually taken over by the, the no, very hard elytra. Okay, so few more characters includes in case of weevils. So this coleoptera includes both beetles and weevils. In case of weevils, the front of the head is projected out into a snout. You can see here. Okay, you come across you now very common weevils, especially in rice. Okay, so they are projected into a snout and mouth parts are found at the tip. Okay, this is where you find the mouth parts. So larvae of these beetles may be you now Yerusi farm, Campodi farm, Elatory farm, platyform. So that means varieties of you no know, you no know, habitat they are you no know, adopted. As a result of the that the, the their body structure is also varies depending on the place or depending on the, the feeding habit. Okay, so many times you may also come across apodos. Apodos means you no know, you no know, insects without you no know, legs, apodos. So in case of grubs, we are talking, in case of weevils, you'll find this you no know, apodos grubs. Otherwise, so they may be you know, well-developed thoracic legs. It may be campodi farm, okay. So especially it is meant for root feeding, it's meant for predaceous purpose, it's for you no know, feeding the hard root like that. So that means they are adapted to varieties of habitats. So in fact, it is one of the largest orders. Okay, so it contains about 35 to 38 percent of all insects. So we know that around 10 lakh species of insects have been described. That means around 3 lakh 50 thousand, more like more than 3 lakh 50 thousand are beetles alone. Okay, hence the 
this is the largest in the animal kingdom if you see the total number of species described on this planet earth we know that about 18 lakh 1.8 million species have been described out of that beetles themselves constitutes 22 percent okay flies wasps plant algae fungi all others are very minor in fact so beetles themselves constitutes 22 percent of total number of species described if you see only the insects out of the 10 lakh it may be around 35 to 38 percent so that means number of beetles are there on this planet earth so that means they are found in almost every type of habit other insects in the web in the, they are in the habitat so that means they, they are found everywhere feed on all sorts of plant and animal matter okay one of the very important reasons for their dominance so they may be phytophagous predaceous parasitic okay so they are adapted to varieties of feeding habits as well scavengers including carrion feeders okay decaying matter so like burying beetles so this is in fact one of the most successful group okay so that's why a lot of research is actually being targeted on these beetles what actually makes these organisms one of the dominant creatures on this planet earth so coming to economic importance many species are pests of our crops okay especially agriculturally these you no know, beetles are very important okay so like say coconut for example you no know, grapes then many forest species like arachnid okay so name any crop for example there may be a beetle feed, feeder for that okay including you know now store okay wherever you have you no know, stored your you no know, grocery items there also so these insects actually causes lot of problem garments wool fur so even even in the museums so they may attack the, the museum specimens which are actually preserved you know it's like that they are in fact they feed on varieties of foodstuffs and as a result they become very problematic however few of them are, are beneficial being you now biocontrol agents so that means so they feed on our pests pest insects thereby they reduce the, the damage of these insects in our crops so that's how some of these insects like ladybird beetles so it's the adult beetle and it's a grub they feed on our pests and they that actually leads us to you no know, reduction in the pest damage in our you no know, no cropping ecosystems and few of them are even acts as vectors of plant pathogens that's how they become very problematic however few of the species are pollinators for example aisle palm weevil allied obs camerunicus so without this no curculionid without this weevil in fact no pollination will not take place in the aisle palm that's why so the presence of this weevil is very important for increasing the yield so that's how it becomes beneficial so as i was telling few of them are scavengers like dung beetles you can see here commonly most of you have come across this one why they carry this type of dung balls in fact they'll actually dig in the soil and you no know, place the eggs in that dung ball and you no know, no preserve the young ones now they as soon as the the x hatches they should get the food with that process in fact okay that increases so the soil health actually increases and also the infiltration rate of water actually increases as a result of that the soil you know, quality or soil health actually improves that is actually one of the important you know, ecosystem service these insects actually provide coming to classification of coleoptera in fact four orders have been identified in this you no know, big garden okay adifaga Polyphaga, Arcostomata, and Mixophaga. So, so these are the some of the representatives of these four suborders. Of course, out of these four, Adiphaga and Polyphaga are major. Okay, in case of Arcostomata and Mixophaga, very few number of species have been described, and also they are not economically important. Okay, so that's why I'll be targeting only these two suborders, Adiphaga and Polyphaga. Okay, so how do you differentiate these two suborders, Adiphaga and Polyphaga? So adifagans are commonly you now includes ground beetles, tiger beetles, predatory diving beetles, whereas polyphaga includes scarabid beetles, ladybird beetles, click beetles like that. Okay, so how do you differentiate? Wing venation usually with an oblongum, whereas in case of polyphaga, wings without an oblongum. I'll show those you no know, characters with that you no know, particular with a particular diagram so that will be easily understand. What you try now, you try to try to understand the, the uh, the pronunciation of some of these terminologies so that it becomes very easy when we you know keep studying and keep repeating it so notoplurals which are visible on lateral ventral side of the thorax okay what is that notoplural you know that notum targum pleuron and sternum right so notoplural in the lateral side okay you'll find the a line a suture okay is clear in case of adifaga whereas that notoplural suture is not visible in case of polyphaga Okay, very easy you can remember because these are comparative character if you know not a plural suture 
you can differentiate these two suborders. Ain't kakse, okay, ain't kakse, four kakse, mid kakse, ain't kakse. I think you are getting my point. Is immovably fixed to the metasternum, pro sternum, meso sternum, and metasternum. So that means ain't kakse, okay, immovably fixed to the metasternum and completely dividing the visible abdominal sternite. So what happens here? No, prothorax, mesothorax, and metathorax, and first abdominal segment starts from here. So as the end cards are actually immovably fixed like this, okay, so as a result of that, actually it completely dividing the first visible abdominal sternite. So you'll find only the part of that structure in the lateral side. I'll show that. So try to understand the meaning of these things. Whereas in case of polyphaga, end cards are rarely fused to the metasternum. But if so, they do not divide the first abdominal sternite. So I'm talking about the metasternum and the first abdominal segment. Okay, so prosternum, mesosternum, metasternum are the first abdominal segment. Okay, if you are talking about the sternum or the ventral region. Okay, so other differentiating characters includes tarsi five five five. So what is this meaning? Okay, so four leg has got five tarsi, mid leg has got five tarsi, tarsal segment, and also hind leg has got five tarsal segment. Whereas in case of Falifega, it may vary. It may be five five four. Okay, four leg, middle leg, hind leg. It's called tarsal formula. Okay, so the species, most of the edifagans are largely predaceous. Okay, in general, most of them are predaceous in habit, both in larval and adult stage. Okay, whereas in case of Polyphaga, feeding habit of larva and adult varies. They have adapted to varieties of you no know, feeding habits. We'll take one by one. Okay, I was telling that wing venation usually with an oblongum in case of Polyphaga. What is this? So we'll find a cell in this region. We know that. Four wing is actually odd elytra. We will not find that any venation. Any venation is not clear in case of four wings. In case of beetles, remember. Whereas hind wings are used for flight, they are membranous. We will find the no venation. So this oblongum is very clear. This OB you can see here. This cell is found. This cell is found in case of polyphaga. But no such cells are formed in case of polyphaga. You can see here. Wing without an oblongum. Very clear, right? So that's how we can differentiate. Similarly, Adifega, Falifega, not a plural suture visible on the lateral ventral side of the thorax. So, if you see this character, you know, observing this character, you need to turn the specimen and look for this. So, for example, this is the you know, prothoracic region, you'll find a line. You'll find a line. So, here I am showing this character. You can see here, this is the prothorax, the sternal, prosternum region, you'll find a line. You can see this inner line, this colored line, okay, between behind this color line. So, this line is very clear in case of Adifega. Okay, this line for example okay this is the one whereas in case of polyphaga you will not find any line you can see here okay, you will not find any line in this okay so that is absent so, so we can easily differentiate these two suborder so one more character i was talking about hind coxae you can see this is hind coxae hind coxae cox of the hind leg is actually fixed no immobile fixed to the metas no sternum as a result of it divides the first visible abdominal sternite okay as a result of fixing like this you can see here this is the coxae. As a result of fixing to first of no metathorax, you'll find this this first abdominal sternum, in fact, is actually divided. It is not continuous, you will not find the entire region of that first abdominal sternite. Okay, so as a result, this first abdominal sternite actually looks divided. Can you see here? Yeah, this numbers you can see here. This is looks this looks actually divided because of this hind coxae. Whereas in case of polyphagia, you can see here it is not immobile fixed. As a result of that, you will find a complete visible abdominal sternite. It, is, it does not divide the visible abdominal sternite. Okay, so very important character. So if you see this diagram, you can easily remember and distinguish these two you know, suborders. Coming to economically important families in Adifega. So in this lecture, under the lecture 13A, I will be talking about only the Adifega and the two only few economically important families under this suborder. Okay, so Carabidae. They are commonly called ground beetles. Sicindelidae, they are commonly called tiger beetles. Deitisidae, they are called predaceous diving beetles. Okay, so we'll take one by one. Carabidae, they are called ground beetles. Probably if you see these you know, photographs, I think you'll recognize. They are very common. They are moving on the ground. Okay, so easily say that, yes, this I have seen. Okay, they are commonly called ground beetles, carabids, bombardier beetles. So, what are the distinguishing features of these carabidae? Head including compound eyes narrower than the pronotum. You can see here. Head including compound eyes is narrower than the pronotum. This is pronotum. Okay. Head including compound eyes is narrower than the pronotum. Okay. If you put a line like this, you can find that no. Head is narrower than the base of the pronotum. It is extended pronotum. Okay. 
second character antenna filiform antenna filiform thread like arising more laterally on the sides of the head between eyes and base of mandibles so you can see here guys this is mandible they are you no know, very strong so between these mandibles and the eyes you will find this no oh, they are found they emerging from the lateral side of the head region so antenna arising from the more from the lateral side of the head another character pronotum is equal to or wider than the base of the wings okay you can see here pronotum is more or less is equal to or wider than the base of the wings okay so that is one more character these are the comparative character so if you remember any of these you no know, few characters you can easily differentiate with next family i'll be talking about tiger beetles called cicindelidae so that's how you can differentiate these two families at a time clypeus not produced laterally beyond the bases of antennae so this beyond the labrum this is labrum beyond the labrum you find the clypeus which is not produced laterally beyond the bases of antennae it is not found or no pronounced beyond the antennae okay so these are the comparative characters again so legs usually not particularly long okay that means in case of tiger beetles they will be very long okay armed with long ears and spines so you'll not find any spines here you can see okay so similarly one more additional character i am putting here for carabidae ground beetles are antennae cleaner, cleaner are present so remember you know we are we have studied about anibes so not only in case of anibes in case of ground beetles also there will be you no know, a, a notch like structure which are called you no know, antennae cleaner in case of olex so some species produce actually puff of smoke like secretions from anus which may irritate the skin you see this photograph okay how actually it is you know producing the puff of smoke through the anus region say so what happens now if a predator are trying to attack these beetles actually so this anus can be directed towards the you no know, any interview and it you no know, releases the you know, puff of smoke which contains hydrogen peroxide with a you no know, loud sound so that's why these beetles this type of beetles are also called bombardier beetles you try to handle that there is in fact you no know, uh, some sort of defensive fluid actually which irritates the skin okay try to catch that you no know? so that's how you can experience and remember that these are actually the ground beetles which actually you know made me like that so they are commonly called bombardier beetles as well so many species are general predators feeding on other insects few of them are very few of them are in fact phytophagous saprophytic okay generally they are predators in fact these are commonly found under stones logs leaves bark debris on edges of streams and on trees okay so in most species the elytra are fused okay rendering the insect flightless so that's why there will be all the time crawling on the ground surface okay so that's why you know, they are called ground beetles in fact i i think you know most of you have seen the, this type of specimens common species anthia sex gutata perina nigrolineata it's actually found in nano coconut ecosystem you know between the leaflets where in this insect called coconut black headed caterpillar very serious pest will be feeding so this predator actually feeds on that larvae as a result actually it reduces the population build up of coconut black headed caterpillar very beneficial insect in fact so we move to next family cicindelidae they are called tiger beetles probably you have seen this type of you no know, beetles with very you no know, very strong agile flyers and very difficult to catch in fact with lot of spots on the body so that's why they are called tiger beetles you no know, very you no know, differentiate differentiable markings like this that's why they are called tiger beetles so head including guys as wide as are wider than the pronotum you can see here okay head is almost no or more than that whereas in case of ground beetles is actually smaller than the base of the pronotum antenna arising from front of the head you can see here in the previous case i was telling that they are actually found between the now mandibles and the eyes here they are found from the front of the head front of the head above the mandible okay, arising from here pronotum narrower than the base of the wings narrower than the base of the wings okay clypeus extends laterally beyond the bases of antenna so as a result of this okay the clypeus pronounced back okay beyond the bases of antenna comparative character you can differentiate both you now carabidae and cicindelidae antenna cleaner is absent you will not find that legs usually long armed with long ears and long spines you can see here two of the characters yeah okay so you can easily differentiate these two very colorful species in fact very active brightly colored found in open areas and sandy beaches okay probably you might have seen this type of insects general predators feeding on varieties of insects which they capture using sickle shaped mandibles can you see here 
sickle shaped mandibles which really drop that they capture and devour where whereas larvae live in soil you can see at these are now soil burrows vertical burrows they make and they will be keep waiting with that you know mandibles open and the usually the pronotum is actually you know is flat plate like which covers that burrow and they will be waiting like this holding this you now uh, mandibles like this whenever a small animal actually moves crawls it captures and devours within that you know soil surface yeah so few species include cicindela sex punctata okay can you remember cicindela sex punctata six points you no know, spots cicindela catena okay so like that you can remember the scientific names as well so how do you differentiate carabidae and cicindelidae head including compound eyes narrower than the base of the pronotum whereas in case of cicindelidae head including eyes as wide as or wider than the pronotum okay antennae arising laterally on the sides of the head from ear whereas here in this case antenna arising from the front of the head above the mandibles yes pronotum is equal to or wider than the base of the wings okay whereas here pronotum is narrower than the base of the wings easy so in fact there is a taxonomic confusion on the status of this family cicindelidae okay especially tiger beetles so as early as in the year 1802 laterally actually first recognized tiger beetle as separate family so we were using for hundreds of years we were using yeah cicindelidae only family name family name cicindelidae if i say i d e i it is actually a family name but what happened so few actually you now few scientists actually throw molecular and morphological evidences they tried to in fact downgrade it as under the sub family name so when i when it is called sub family automatically the name actually changes it is called cicindelinae okay so for um, last you know, 8 10 years or so we are using as this tiger beetle as sub family as cicindelinae okay previously it was existed as family cicindelidae but for about 8 10 years we were using it as sub family cicindelinae but however very recently about 2 3 months back it was an article in systematic entomology so validation of tiger beetles has distinct family so they considered again these tiger beetles as separate family okay so as a result of that in fact i am considering that as a separate family and we discussed so that's how we could able to distinguish terabide and cicindelidae so but last 8 10 years are so this cicindelinae was considered as a sub family under the family carabidae under the ground beetles itself okay but now they have separated because of you now this publication so there is one more family called dytisidae they are commonly called predaceous diving beetles they are aquatic predaceous beetles lives in ponds and streams you can easily remember all these adipagans in fact we are studying only three families right carabidae cicindelidae and dytisidae all of them are actually predaceous antennae filiform longer than the maxillary palpi okay antennae are longer than the maxillary palpi can see here okay hind legs flat and and fringed for swimming purpose okay they are natatorial like hind legs are actually you no know, are flat with lot of fringes of hairs which pushes the you no know, water back and move forward so here also both grubs and adults are highly predaceous okay feeding on small aquatic animals including small fish so okay so the the larvae of these insects or grubs of these insects actually lives in aquatic ecosystem itself so common species includes dytiscus marginalis idaticus fabricae okay so these are the few species okay so in this lecture 13a we discussed order level characters of coleoptera its two suborders adipaga and polypaga in fact there are four suborders but i'll be concentrating only on the two suborders okay adipaga and polypaga so in this class i completed the discussion on the adipaga subord level characters of coleoptera both these you no know, distinguishing characters of this adipaga and polypaga economically important families of adipaga wherein we discussed carabidae cicindelidae and dytisidae okay so these are the few visuals i think you will easily recognize now ground beetles carabidae tiger beetles cicindelidae and predaceous diving beetles this adult and grub that belongs to family called dytisidae okay so very easy now i think so thank you thank you very much now if there are any questions you can post below or you can email me as well thank you thank you very much